We all know the Axe Effects can do amazing high gain sounds, it can do incredible ambient tones, but what everybody wants to know is how well does it do edge of breakup tones. So I want to show you how we can dial in a couple of different amps for the mythical edge of breakup kind of thing. I'm using a 77 Strat with a Sir Michael Landau pickups in it. So obviously a big part of these tones is the guitar that you use. I'd recommend something with like low to moderate output pickups. Uh, that way, you know, you're not just absolutely slamming the front end with too much, uh, too much gain, basically. That way you'll be able to get quite a nice clean to distorted kind of sound. And from then on, it's going to be down to just how we control the gain and how we use the EQ and sort of understanding how those things work with different amplifiers. So let's get started. What I have got is the Tweed Deluxe model uh, at the stock settings. This is, this is probably my favorite Fender model in the Axe FX3, so I figured it would be a good place to start because, you know, everybody loves Fenders for clean tones and kind of gritty tones. So what I like to do is turn the bass down and turn the treble up a little bit with this amp. So here it is at the stock settings. I'm using one of these stock Tweed Deluxe, uh, or this 5920 double with the um, KSM 313 impulse. I have got a low cut at 80 hertz and a little bit of the room parameter dialed in. This is what it sounds like at the stock settings on the, let's do the neck and middle for all of this. Uh, it's a little bit woofy, it's a little bit compressed and kind of not quite there at the stock settings, but we'll quickly dial it in. Uh, and get that edge breakup goodness. What I had to do, and this is quite common with Fender circuits, is turn the bass down, turn the treble up. And as you'll see, if you go to the preamp page here, you can see that the tone stack is before the gain stage. So this EQ section here is going to change how the gain control works as well. So all of this is a little bit interactive and you kind of have to dial in the bass and the treble and to an extent the mids, although I don't think this amp originally had a mid range control, but we can always you know, turn the mids down or something like that as well. Uh, if you're not too worried about that, I've no idea if it had a mid control. I'm just leaving it there because it sounds good. So uh, yeah, so you kind of match that with your guitar. If you're using like a humbucker equipped guitar, you're, you're almost definitely gonna want to turn the bass down more and the middle down more as well. But for me, that's pretty cool. And then what we're gonna do is, and this is kind of my guide, I guess. This is what I do when I go and try to dial in like a sort of clean to gritty sort of tone. I'm gonna play on the bridge pickup of this guitar now, and I'm gonna hit it as hard as I can, and I'm gonna turn the gain control down until that like maximum crack is just giving me just enough grit. So this is, uh, you'll see me turn it down, I'll start like maximum impact on the bridge pickup, kind of maximum output from my guitar, and then I'm gonna turn the input drive down just until we get to that sort of edgy quality. <laughs> about there, so somewhere around three on this amp with this guitar. What this now gives me is if I go back and play on that neck and middle position and I play softly, it's gonna give me quite a sweet clean tone. I could probably even turn the input drive up just a little bit if I wanted a bit more grit while I'm playing really hard. So 
that's pretty cool. If you turn the middle control up on this amp, uh, what it's going to do is add a little bit of extra input uh, and basically shape the gain so it's a little bit more mid-range heavy. Have a listen to this. Almost like turning a tube screamer on, whereas if you turn it down, you get less of that effect. And the other two EQ controls do the same thing. For example, if you turn the treble up, you're going to get sort of more of a bright, zingy distortion. Which I'm not super into. And the same thing with the bass control. As you turn that up, it's just going to get... You're going to get more gain, but it's just kind of going to be woofy and muddy and compressed. <laughs> Which ain't what I like much. I actually don't mind the uh, middle control up a little bit. Maybe a little bit closer to five. But yeah, basically that, that's how we can use uh, a Fender style amp which has the tone stack before the gain to get an edge of breakup kind of tone. The nice thing about the axe is we've got all these, these other parameters to play with. One of my favorite ones is to turn the output compression up, say to about two. And what this is going to do is it's not going to affect the touch sensitivity of the amp. So when I play softly, I'll still get a clean sound. And when I play hard, I'm still going to get a distorted sound, but it will level out any volume differences there. Uh, with it off, you'll notice that if I play quite softly, uh, as opposed to playing quite hard, there's a quite a jump in volume. Whereas if I add some output compression, it's going to level that out a little bit, which I like when I'm playing live. Um, it means I'm not getting lost in the mix when I'm kind of playing clean. Let's have a listen again. So I really like the output comp parameter and I like the speaker compression parameter parameter as well in the uh, dry box. Say if we turn that up to just above three, uh, you'll get between like three and six dB of gain reduction again, which is pretty cool. And I think contributes to the amp likeness of all of this, if that even is a word. Playing around with the SAG control uh, here and turning that up also kind of gives you a little bit more of that sort of like output and compression, which is really desirable, I think, for these kind of tones. So that's the Tweed Deluxe, and they're my favorite tweaks with that. I've got a couple of other amps and IRs matched up here. On scene number two, I've got the matchless DC30 model, uh, and I've matched it, <laughs> matched it up with this York Audio uh, 1x15 Celestian Blue Impulse. This is one of my favorite amps in the axe. All I basically do is turn the high cut up to about three, uh, and the input drive down to about three, and you've got a great chimey edge of breakup, you know, ideal world Vox kind of thing happening. <laughs> I mean, 
You might want to turn the bass down a little bit depending on which pickup you're playing on, but I think that sounds really, really good. And same thing, add a little bit of output compression, uh, kind of like about two or three. Maybe a little bit lower for this amp. And then add, uh, you know, I always like increasing the sag control and adding a bit of speaker compression. So you get this. And again, this is just kind of about getting the preamp gain right, using the EQ controls to shape the voicing of that gain, and then using the SAG, the speaker compression, the output compression, to sort of level everything out, uh, especially you know because we're going for an edge of breakup sound, we're not going for full-on saturation, we're not going for a full-on clean sound. Scene 3, another amp that I really, really like that I think is pretty overlooked is a Carolan OD2. Kind of for like a dumbly kind of thing, and I've got this mashed up with this uh, 1x12 Carolan Impulse. At the stock settings, it's not super inspiring. So what we can do is we can turn uh, either the input drive or the overdrive down, each one is going to have a different effect. This, to me, could do with just a little bit more brightness. So I'm going to use the input drive because as you turn the input drive down, the amp gets brighter and cleaner. Have a listen. <laughs> Kind of like the Fender, we can drop a little bit of bass and a little bit of mid and add just a little bit of treble in there as well. I might just bump the overdrive control up a little bit as well. And hopefully, now we're in edge of breakup territory. So that's the Carolan, and another favorite of mine is the Mesa Lone Star. Uh, I've got this matched up, again, with kind of like a matching impulse. And then for this one, this one's pretty bass heavy, so I turn the bass down quite a bit and the mids, and we get this at the stock settings. This one's a lot cleaner than the other amps to start with.
all day. You see that I turned the master volume up there as well because this is a non-master volume amp. Um, I really like this one just because it's sort of like you can hear all of those qualities come in and out as you tweak the parameters, um, especially what the output compression and the speaker compression are doing there. And I, I find a lot of the time, for me anyway, I like that compressed thing happening with these amps when I play really hard because they don't get super dirty. Uh, so they're still really clear, but the compression feels really good to play with. And I find a lot of the time, just in general with guitar tones, a lot of the time, um, you know, when people are playing and they turn the gain up, it's not because they really want more gain, it's because they want the amp to be more compressed. So with all of these, what I've been trying to show you guys and what I've been trying to find is that point with the input drive where the amp starts to compress when you play really hard. And um, I mean, you can get that right and then you can add more or less compression with the output comp and the speaker comp and things like that. The great thing about all these amps is that once you kind of get, I mean, you can turn the gain down on this one a little bit and really go for, you know, a gorgeous clean sound. And then you can add a drive block. One of my favorites is this kind of uh, these clon settings that I've got dialed in using the FET boost. And the, I mean, in real life, the clon's a great pedal because what it does is it gives you like more of what you like about an amp and this block kind of gets you there as well. So with the Lone Star, uh, on the neck pickup I've got this. Try that with a couple of other amps. This one's really cool with the Carol Ann as well. I just gotta make sure I get the right channel. Uh, so this is clean. So there you go, hopefully that gives you an idea of what the Axe FX3 can do with edge of breakup tones and how to get them. Uh, as I said earlier, balancing that input gain with compression seems to sort of be the trick. And of course, if you want more of like a sort of open jangly thing, just turn all the output compression off. Uh, but for me, that's what I like. I like that kind of like, sounds like the amps, you know, really, really purring. Like if you had the, the real amp in the room with you, it would sort of be buzzing and there'd be a lot of static and stuff like that. And you'd be like, yeah, this thing's kind of on that verge of ready to explode. And uh, with the Axe FX3, you know, it's, um, we don't have to worry about all that noise, but we can get the dynamics and the feel right. So yeah, 
There's a couple of amps, why don't you tell me in the comments which amps you like for these kind of tones. And you know, edge of breakup tones, like I said, they're everywhere. Country music, blues, worship music. You hear them all over the radio nowadays, uh, which I think is a cool thing. Uh, when you do hear guitar on the radio anyway, this is like a very sort of popular tone. Uh, whether it's John Mayer or whether it's Keith Urban or whether it's like Robin Ford, uh, these kind of guys are, these are great tones and if you're like me and you're mostly someone who just sits there in like a drop tuning chugging with a heavy amp, these are really, really wonderful amps to explore and sort of open up your playing as well. So there we go. Hopefully you found this video interesting and informative. If you did, hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, I will see you guys around next time.